So a lot of people ask me the following question. I've got a computer, a Mac or a Windows computer, and I want to get going making music at home. I want to put together a home studio. What equipment do I need to get started? I get asked this a lot, right? So what I did was I went to Tom Mann's web store and I put together a bundle of equipment for a friend of mine, a client, who wanted to do exactly that. They had a Mac computer, they wanted to put together a full bundle of equipment to be able to make demo recordings of their songs and ideas. So this is the bundle I put together, and this is a low budget bundle, okay? So we start with, you need a computer, obviously. Uh, I always recommend a Mac for complete beginners because Macs do not require any drivers for anything that you plug into them that is USB. So you can plug in your USB audio interface and your master keyboard, and as soon as you plug them in, they just work. It's, it's easier for the beginner, right? But you could use a Windows computer, obviously. So we start with the computer, and the first thing we need is our USB audio interface. Okay, this box will allow us to plug our mic, line, and instruments, guitars, into the system to record them. We're on a budget here. This is one of the cheapest, best quality interfaces you can get at the moment the Presonus Audio Box i1. Presonus is a good make, it sounds good. It's got a single mic input, which is plenty for a person working at home. It also has an instrument and line input here, uh, allowing you to plug your guitars, electric guitars and basses, directly into the system to record through amp modeling software hosted in your sequencer, like Logic or Cubase or GarageBand or whatever, right? The other important reason I chose this um, Audio Box i1 is because it has a dedicated separate volume control for the speakers and the headphones. Now this is important for the beginner. When you're recording on the mic, the speakers must be turned down. So you can easily turn down the speakers using this large speaker volume control, record on the mic, monitoring on the headphones at whatever level you require, and then when you finish recording on the mic, you can quickly and easily turn the speakers back up again using this speaker volume control. So that's why I went for the Presonus Audio Box i1, one of the cheapest products with a good name and the right facilities that you can get at the moment for a USB audio interface, right? Okay, next we need some active monitors and I went for the Alesis Elevate 5 Mark IIs. At the budget price that the, 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 the client wanted, they wanted to go on a really low budget, these are the, one of the cheapest pairs of 5 inch speakers you can get. So they're decent size, I spent the afternoon listening with them They've got a good bass response, they're not harsh, they've got a good sound, and they go plenty loud. The other interesting thing about these speakers is they are powered monitors, but the amp is only in one of the speakers, and then a special cable carries the signal to the other speaker. So both speakers are powered from an amp in one of the speakers, so you only need a single mains lead to power both speakers. Okay, So they're the speakers, um, Alesis Elevate 5 Mark IIs. Okay, then we need a couple of cheap quarter-inch jack-to-jack leads to connect the audio interface to the two speakers. So a couple of cheap quarter-inch jack-to-jack leads, leads. These are like, you know, two pounds each, right? Next, we need a mic and a mic stand and a mic lead. Now, I, these are all Tom Mann own brand. I chose this mic, the Tom Mann T-Bone SC450. It's a one-inch gold uh, foil diaphragm uh, Chinese made condenser mic um, it's one of the biggest selling mics Tom Mann has had over the years it sells huge quantities and it's a good quality mic it comes in a lovely aluminium carrying case with its own shock mount cape, um, cradle and for to go with that I chose a Tom Mann own brand metal boom stand and a Tom Mann own brand six meter microphone lead the boom stand is essential because we can have it upright for recording vocals, but we can also angle it down if we need to record um, something like an amp combo sitting on the floor. All right. So there's the mic, the stand and the lead. And then we needed a pair of headphones. Now, you can get headphones nowadays starting at just £10, but the user wanted something a little bit nicer, so we went for these K52s from AKG. The um, headband at the top is elasticated, it just adjusts to your head, so there's no slidey fiddly bits that could break on the edges here. Fully enclosed headphones, beautiful soft padded cups, nice and light and a really good sound. 
and that's the headphones that I recommended. And that leaves one thing. Um, all modern sequencers like Cubase, Logic, GarageBand, etc., they all have software instruments. And it's much better to play those instruments from a master keyboard than to try and pencil in patterns using a pencil tool in, in a piano roll editor, right? So the last thing is a cheap master keyboard, a USB master keyboard. Again, the user was on a real budget, so I didn't go for something expensive. This Alesis Q25 is one of the cheapest master keyboards you can get with full-size keys, which is important. That the user wanted full-size keys, right? Not mini keys. There are no fancy controller knobs to confuse the, the user because she's a complete beginner. She just wants to be able to play the synthesizer and other instruments from a keyboard. And you've got a simple octave up and down button and a pitch and modulation wheel. Easy peasy. Okay, so that's the master keyboard I went for. So there is the whole bundle. That is everything you need to get going making music on a computer, whether you're doing recordings of guitar-based songs or whether you're doing electronic or dance music. All this equipment is good enough quality to turn out a release quality song. Okay? Um, and the other thing is, I put this bundle together on Tom Man, um, who I always use, because not only do they offer a good low street price, which gives you a good indicator to compare other retailers against, but everything in this package is covered with a full three-year guarantee. Okay, so if anything breaks, you just put it in a box, send it back, and they'll repair or replace. Three years peace of mind, right? So there's the whole bundle. The audio interface, pair of active monitors, headphones, mic stand and lead, and a master keyboard. The whole package, 445 euros or 380 British pounds. And I spent about an hour going through Tom Mann's shop, checking the products in the different categories to put this bundle together. And I'm telling you, this is what I recommended my client. This is a good selection of products at that budget price that you can get. This is what I recommended. Okay. Now, if you want to buy this bundle yourself to begin making music, in the description below, I've put a link to each product in the bundle. All you have to do is click each link and then put each item into your shopping cart on the Tom Man website and then purchase the bundle yourself if you want to buy this bundle. Okay. So um, that's what we ordered um, and the package arrived in a big box last week. I took my video camera over to the client's flat where we unboxed and set everything up. Let's check out that footage now. Okay, so that's the package. We've got the speakers, we've got the USB audio interface, headphones, controller keyboard, large diaphragm condenser mic, microphone lead, and a metal good quality microphone boom stand. booklet which has got rubber feet for the speakers that you can stick onto the speakers one speaker it's a bit dull in here but Second speaker. So as you can see, one speaker has all the controls and the amp, and then a special lead connects to the second speaker carrying the other signal for the other side. So also included is a bundle of cables. So Tom Man have very thoughtfully included a British mains lead because this came with a Euro uh, mains adapter. Okay, so to set these up, you take the special connecting lead and connect between the two speakers like that. Output to left speaker. Right? And 
and then the mains lead plugs into this speaker which has the amp, this is the right hand speaker, power switch is there and then that just plugs into the mains. Also uh, this speaker here has a volume control pot on the front and there's also a little tiny headphone socket there, you can take a pair of headphones. I'm presuming when you plug the headphones in, that's a micro a mini jack stereo connector. I'm presuming it cuts the speakers out. It might, but anyway, there's a volume control here. The power switch is on the back. Give that a lead. Okay, so that's your speakers. And of course, we've got the rubber feet we can put underneath to stop them moving around. And then we need to set up the USB interface that will connect to the speakers and then the mic and guitar and line inputs plug into this to, to feed into GarageBand to be recorded. It comes with a free software um, called Studio One, um, but the client is going to be using GarageBand. And of course on a Mac there are no drivers required. You just plug it in and off you go. That's the advantage of Mac. So there's the interface, it's very dinky. There's my hand look. I haven't got huge paws, there's my hand. Got mic input, 48 volt phantom power. There's an instrument input to plug your guitars in direct. Independent volume gain controls for each, each input and um, there's a 48 volt switch and the headphones and the main speaker out at the back have their own separate volume controls. Main speaker out at the back, left right jack out, USB connector and that controls the volume for the headphones separately which is really useful. Okay, that's his dinky right? Personas is a good make and um, comes with USB lead. USB connector goes in there and then this obviously plugs into a USB connection on the iMac ok so it's plugged in, the lights come on And there should be no drivers to set up. All we have to do is just open GarageBand and set the audio interface up. GarageBand preferences, audio MIDI, output device, Presonus Audio Box 1. And there it's done. The input and the output device, oh, I don't know if you can see that. Oop, there we go. The input and output here have both been set to the Presonus Audio Box I1. Okay, that's done. That's it. Yeah, we just connect the left right speaker outs to the speakers now. And for that, you just need two quarter inch jack to jack leads. So, nice okay, one. Lead number one. Second speaker lead. They both both speakers plug in here, left and right. And then this special lead carries the signal across to the other speaker. Right, so let's switch them on. Power on the back, and we should have something now. You've got volume control there for the speakers. Volume. Yeah, plenty loud enough. Okay. And then, for monitoring purposes when recording, this is the beauty of this interface, you can turn the speakers down quickly here while you're recording. Nothing comes out of the speakers. 
and then you can adjust the headphone level that you want to monitor with while you're recording here and then turn the speakers back up when you want to play back and listen. So a decent pair of headphones, obviously the client could have gone for much cheaper headphones, you can get headphones starting at you know £10, but they decided to go for this decent pair of AKGs, closed back headphones. Lovely, very nice, and they're nice and light, good padding. And uh, I'll just plug them in and the client can have... Did they pull out? Can you make them bigger? Yeah, like oh. this. Like. That's just spring-loaded, it adjusts automatically to your head. Headphones, go into the headphone socket. Headphone socket and speaker level, headphone level. Yeah, good? Yes, very good. Alrighty, we're rocking and rolling. Right, and that leaves a couple of extras. Oh, oh very nice. Look at this case here. Beautiful. And the mic yeah. comes in its own aluminium carrying case. Wow, look at that. Mm. That's the mic cradle. You get a sprung mic cradle, obviously, elasticated mic cradle. And there's the mic. <laughs> Bring it so you can see it. <laughs> yeah. Large diaphragm, gold one inch large diaphragm. Let's just take it out. Nice to case to keep it safe. And if you're travelling around doing sessions, you might want to take your mic with you. Ooh, yeah. nice, yes. Just to show, there is a Base roll off switch you can bring in there and um, you can adjust the sensitivity level there as well. There it is, that's the SC450. It's a very, very big selling mic at Tom Man. And uh, here we have the cradle. So let's put the mic in. Mm -hmm. That's the sprung cradle. The mic slides into that and that attaches to the mic stand. And we've got. A boom stand to go with that. Yeah, so this is a Tom Man own brand mic stand. It's all metal construction, three feet. Yeah, keep it out permanently. Like that. Yeah. It's got um, adjustable height. We can do it to, to, to set it up. It's got adjustable height for the boom. Set it up. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to. Then we can screw the cradle onto the, the bolt. There we go. Okay, I'll make that nice and tight. Okay, so the mic goes. What's these measurements for? What are these for? That's to turn, you've got a roll off switch for the mic to take the base end down. And you've got a sensitivity to lower the level if it's if what you're recording is really low. And the mic, there's nothing to bolt. You just slide it into that cradle like that and position it the right way round. And that's it. And then we have the lead on the mic. And the like mic this. lead. Like nice mic. Very nice mic. I've um, I've used the SC400, which is a much cheaper version than this one, and that. The SC400 is really good, and this one is going to be better. See, everything. There's a little lever there. Yeah, you put this in there. To open that up and what have you. So, okay, so. Of it, like, um, that goes into the mic. Like that. And, and then that goes into your Personas audio box. Okay, so the mic plugs in. You plug the mic in. Uh -huh. Okay, so now the mic's plugged in. You just want to turn on the phantom power. Here we go. Phantom power on. That's the mic input level. So try it out with the headphones. Without? With the headphones. I'll get your track set up in GarageBand. 
There goes the neighbourhood. There goes the neighbourhood. Can you hear yourself? There goes the neighbourhood. There goes the neighbourhood. There goes the neighbourhood. La 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 la. There goes the neighbourhood. There goes. There goes. La 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 la. And there goes. Move the mic round more to the right time. angle where you see. It's very clean. I'm just sort of like a. Yeah, but you're sound. using a false sound. Go for um, a clean sound. Is it like Try that. Clean. There goes the neighbourhood. Sounds like crisp though, doesn't it? There goes the neighbourhood. I don't like that vocal. But it sounds crisp, doesn't yes, it? Yes, I like a bit of distortion. Okay. Like, can I get that off? Yeah, but, but we just we can do that afterwards. I'm just showing them the setup. So the last thing in the package is this MIDI master keyboard. Okay, this is nothing fancy schmancy, but it's full size keys. That's this box. Full size keys. And there's no, you know, it's not covered in fancy control knobs or anything like that. The, the client just wants to be able to play instruments. You've got an octave up down, you've got your, your um, pitch and modulation wheel, etc. Okay, so that just uh, plugs in the back, except there's no USB lead. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, USB no. lead. My apologies, have. Elisis. There is a USB lead. Right, USB lead. Once that plugs in the back of here. Yeah, I've got to keep it like on the table, it looks like that. And again, the beauty of Mac is there's nothing to set up. But these are these are drum these are Yeah, because you're playing a drum track. But can we have this can we have the synth? Right, notes? let's make a synth track. <laughs> And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> In a scene described by one investigator as reminiscent of a weird religious rite, five persons, including actress Sharon Tate, were found dead at the home of Miss Tate and her husband, screen director Roman Poyanski. Miss Tate, who starred in Family of the Dolls, was eight months pregnant and was found in a bikini tight night gown with a rope around her neck attached to the body of a man. Two bodies inside, two bodies outside. In the the other victims were Hollywood Badgers. hairstylist Jay Sebring and Poppy heiress Abigail Charles Jackson. Authorities would allow no one in an unofficial capacity inside the posh $200,000 home in the hills overlooking Los Angeles. When police arrived, they found the telephones and electricity lines cut. The bodies have been dead about Badgers. 12 months.